Okay, let's take a look at derivatives and how they're representing the graphs. So this, here's a, a function that has lots of different characteristics in it. And the question is, what's happening at f prime of 1? Well, if I look at x equals 1, there's an asymptote. And when there's an asymptote, there's no tangent line. So at f prime of 1, the derivative would, does not exist because of that asymptote. Same thing happens at f prime of 2, because this is a, uh, uh, there's a hole there. I remember a derivative measures the slope of the tangent line. Well, because of the hole, the tangent line has nothing to attach to at that curve, so there is no tangent line. So at f prime of 2, it would also be d and e. Um, f prime of 3, remember this is a cusp. So again, this is another situation that does not exist, even though the function itself is continuous. F prime of 4, this is a maximum. So this is a situation where the derivative would have to equal 0, because I would have a horizontal tangent line. Okay? Um, if we're looking at the second derivative, so first of all, if we look at the first derivative, we would know that the first derivative would be positive here because the function's increasing. Negative here in this region because it's decreasing. Positive. And then negative, again, because increasing and decreasing behavior. But if we start to look at the second derivative function, which is concavity, you would notice here that the second derivative here would be positive because it's concave up. It would be positive here because it's concave up also. But down here, it would actually be negative because if you notice here, it's concave down. If the curve is facing down. And likewise, this would be negative because it's curving down. Actually, it would be negative all the way throughout the rest of the function because it's always concave down. So again, this is how we analyze graphs by thinking about the first and second derivatives. The first derivative includes increasing or decreasing behavior. The second derivative looks at concavity. Okay, we're asked to look at the equation f of x equals 6x squared plus 10x cubed graphically and algebraically. Well, let's look at it graphically. If I look at a graph from a derivative standpoint, I want to know where the derivative is 0 or does not exist. Okay, well, there's no, first of all, for the DNEs, I can kind of rule that out because there's no holes or asymptotes or cusp in this graph. But I certainly could find a place where this derivative is 0. The first place would be at that maximum, around negative 0.5. And this minimum would also be a derivative equal zero, at equals 0. So I would know that it would be, the derivative would be equal to 0 at around x equals negative 0.5 and 0. Okay? Okay, let's look at this from a second derivative standpoint. So again, we're looking where the second derivative now is 0 or does not exist. And once again, d and e kind of gets eliminated here because of the lack of holes, asymptotes, and cusps. Those are the places where derivatives do not exist. But from, a, from equal zero, we're looking at a point where it changes concavity. That's where the, um, where the second derivative is zero, what, what is called a point of inflection, which is abbreviated pi. And this will occur at approximately x equals negative 0.25-ish or so. Because if you notice there, if I put a dot right there, you can see to the left of that, it's definitely frowning or concave down. And to the right of that, it's smiling or concave up. So it's changed concavity right there at that point there. So this would be a point of inflection. And this would be the only place where the second derivative is equal to zero. What we're going to try to do is to confirm that this equation actually has these characteristics algebraically. Okay, so let's look at it from a first derivative standpoint. Let's find the first derivative of this function. So we're going to use the power rule and get 12x plus 30x squared. We're going to set this equal to 0 and see if we can solve. So what I'm going to do here is look for a common factor. We've been practicing this, finding the common factor in both those terms. And I see here that, oh, 6x looks pretty good. And so if I divide both those terms by 6x, I end up with 2 plus 5x. 
And so now I have a multiplication problem equal to 0, so that means either 6x has to be 0, which means x is 0, or 2 plus 5x has to be equal to 0. And if I solve for x there, I can see that x could be negative 0 0.4. So these are the two points in which the derivative equals 0. I remember from the graph I was estimating at x equals 0 and x equals negative 0.5. So this kind of confirms what I saw on the previous graph. Okay, let's look at it from the second derivative standpoint. So I'm going to derive this again. So remember the first derivative was 12x plus 30x squared. So the second derivative would be 12 plus 60x. And again, I'm going to set this equal to 0 and solve for x. So I get x equals negative 1 fifth, which is approximately negative 0.2, which remember I estimated this as being negative 0.25 in the graph. This is the point of inflection that I saw on the previous graph. So again, this is how we confirm algebraically what we saw graphically on the previous page. So what we can do here is start to find analyze graphs by looking at the, the derivative and second derivative to analyze the behavior. So this is supposed to be x to the 4 thirds. This is an exponent. Likewise, this is 4x to the 1 third. doesn't look like that here, but trust me, there are supposed to be exponents here. So I'm going to find h prime of x by using the power rule. So this would be 4 thirds x to the 1 third plus actually 4 thirds x to the negative 2 thirds. So very careful with my power rule here, making sure I got that. I'm going to set them equal to 0. and try to solve. Again, let me use this greatest common factor here. So I'm going to look here and say, what can I take out of both terms? Well, I can see here, obviously, it's 4 thirds. And then the tricky part here is to take x to the 1 third and x to the negative 2 thirds and realize what I can divide both those by. And it turns out I can divide both of them by x to the negative 2 thirds power. And so what ha what's happened, what's left then, is I get x to the first power plus 1. So now I can analyze this and realize the only way this can equal to 0, this is a, remember a negative exponent means dividing point, this can never equal to 0, so this is a situation where it does not exist. And this can only equal 0 if x equals negative 1. So 0 would be a critical point because it doesn't exist, and x equals negative 1 would be a critical point because it does actually make this equation equal to 0. So I'm going to draw a number line here. I'm going to label this h prime. I'm going to put my critical points on there. Zero. Okay, let me put the zero here and put them in order here. So let's put negative one over here. And I'm going to put the reasons why that they were critical points. So negative one, remember, made h prime zero. And zero made it d and e. Okay? And then to complete this graph, what I'm going to do is find out what's happening to the left and right of each of these points. So I'm going to look at this equation right here and pick values like, for example, negative 2 and say, well, what kind of equation will I get here? Well, if I look here, negative 2 to the negative 2 thirds power is going to have to be a negative number. And negative 2 plus 1 would have to be a negative. So a negative times a negative would give me positive. If I pick a number in between 0 and negative 1, say negative 1 half, I would get a negative number over here for the first term. But negative 1 half plus 1 would be positive. So negative times a positive would give me negative. And to the right of 0, a nice number there would be 1. I would get a positive number here for the first term. 1 plus 1 is 2, and that would be also be positive. So I can see now that this function would be increasing, level off, decreasing. I have a D and E, so it would be a whole or a cusp. I'm not sure what that is without doing a little more analysis here. And increasing. But this would definitely be a situation where it did not exist now I can actually analyze this graph and look at the number line and predict what the behavior of this graph is without ever grabbing a graph. So let's look at it from the second derivative standpoint. So I need to derive this again. So this was 4 ninths x 
to the negative two-thirds. And again, this was h double prime of x. Oops. Uh, minus four-ninths x to the negative five-thirds power. And again, i got to go back and look at the first derivative to define this derivative. Derive it again and use the power rule again. And I set it equal to zero again. So, some of the equations here. And I factor this. So again, I can look here and say 4 ninths x. The trick here is to take the lower of the two exponents. That will always be the common factor. And see what's left. So this will be x to the first minus 1. So again, this would be a situation where the uh, 0 would actually make a DNE. So this will be a critical point because it makes it non-existent. And this will be x equals 1. So from a second derivative standpoint, if I were to make a number line, I would put the number 0 because it does not exist and the number 1 because it makes it 0. And I pick points to the left and right of there. Um, left of 0 would maybe be a negative 1. And I would get a negative times a negative. So I would get a positive here. In between 0 and 1, I would pick positive 1 half. And again, I would get positive times a negative. That would be negative. And if I pick a number to the right of 1, I would get a positive times a positive, which would be positive. And so I can look here and say, oh yeah, concave up. Because remember, second derivative deals with concavity. Again, DNE means a cusp or a hole or asymptote. Concave down. This would be a point of inflection. And at the very end, I would get concave up. And so this would be the second derivative of what the number line would look like. Okay, this is a classic AP exam question. They give you a problem and ask you to sketch what the graph may look like. So this is um, what we call interval notation. This means from x equals negative 5 to negative 2. It has this property where it has a positive first derivative and a positive second derivative x equals negative 2, it's d and e in both derivatives case. And then from x equals negative 2 to x equals positive 2. Notice the first derivative is negative, but the second derivative is still positive. At x equals 2, they're both 0. And then from x equals 2 to x equals 5, both the first and second derivative are negative. So we're trying to sketch a function that matches this criteria. So we know, and please note the word continuous. That kind of limits our, our the op opt it limits our options that we can have where the graph doesn't exist. Remember we have holes, asymptotes, or cusps. But because it's continuous, we have no choice but to put a cusp at x equals negative 2. So from x equals negative 5 to 2, we need some sort of function that's increasing but concave up. Remember, a positive derivative means the function is going up. A positive second derivative means it's concave up. So it's increasing and concave up. Um, from x equals negative 5 to x equals negative 2. So maybe something like that, increasing and concave up. We know there's a cusp at x equals negative 2, and then it has to be after that, it has to be decreasing, and, but still concave up. So I'm going to draw some sort of function that looks like this, decreasing and concave up. And this is going to continue on until I get to x equals 2. x equals 2, if you notice, both the first and second derivative is 0. So that means it levels off, and this is a point of inflection. Okay, so that means it has to change concavity. Well, sure enough, if you look here, it decreases and concave down. So I'm going to draw a function that decreases and concave down, and I now have a function that meets all the criteria that this graph is asking me.